Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video today. Yeah, I had a bit of a break. I haven't been posting for the past month in between moving houses, which you'll see soon, probably in my next video. And uh, I had Corona. Didn't really get ill, so that's good. Um, but the one thing is I've lost my sense of taste and smell. Well, I have done for the past month and I'm sort of getting it back, which has got me craving all things sweet. Now, whilst I was posted up on the sofa, feeling a little bit sorry for myself, I thought, what was big on YouTube 10 years ago? trying American candy. So I thought today's video, what we could do is try American candy, but with a little bit of a design twist on it and sort of look at the logos, the packaging, that sort of thing, and then pick one of them to rebrand. I just thought lockdown, we're all still in it and I've got nothing else to do with my life. So here we are. By the way, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you are subscribed. I've got a lot of stuff coming this year. I'm planning a lot of bigger and better videos and it's going to be sick and you're going to love it. So yeah, let's get on with today's video. Right, so this is the box I ordered off Amazon. It's quite expensive. It's like 25 quid. American candy seems to be really expensive in the UK anyway, so fair enough. And yeah, it's packaged quite nicely, not gonna lie. I've got a little card in here. Enjoy your candy, packed by Gemma with a little heart. It's nice, isn't it? Nice try, got a girlfriend. Right, so let's have a look and see what's inside. Obviously, we've got the big boys in here, Reese's. Not gonna lie, banger. Peanut butter and chocolate, ideal. The branding for Reese's is like that classic, iconic orange and yellow. I feel like you don't even really need branding on there. You see this orange and you automatically know it's Reese's. I mean, everything in here is quite bright, very, very bright. And that's because confectionery is obviously aimed at kids. So it needs to be very bright to sort of grab their attention. It's quite a small sort of surface area to advertise on. Got a Tootsie Roll. I don't know what a Tootsie Roll is. I'll give that a little go. But you've got like a, um, what is it? A Cooper type face going on there. Nerds, very vibrant, haven't had them before. Let those go. Whoa. So then we got Mike and Ike's. I feel like I've heard them in American films and things like that. I'm not really, look, look at the, the packaging on here. It sort of looks like a dodgy club. I've seen like little club night promotion free shop vouchers that look exactly like this. So not a fan of this. This may be one that I might have to rebrand because, um, oh, they're jelly beans. Mm. They're nice though, quite like those. Jelly Belly, probably one of the most iconic American candies, I guess. Definitely the first thing I tried out of America. Popcorn was the best flavor. This one doesn't have popcorn in it. So we got, we got Airheads, green apple flavor. That is scary. That face there. I mean, it's quite cool. You can imagine it being on like some sort of rave poster, but nah, that's gonna that's gonna haunt you in your dreams. Next, we got Kool Aid. I've never tried that before. Quite cool. I like that. Again, very iconic. I don't know why. Looking at it just feels nostalgic, which is good because I don't even remember this when I was younger. So rule 101: if you're trying to market to kids, make a mascot, mate. Look, even that is a jug. It's a jug with a face on it. Just stick a face on anything and um, and sell it to kids. That's how it works. Okay, let's put a little bit here. Chewy lemon heads. Bit of a weird mix of packaging going on there. You got some photography sort of thing and then you got some like bold graphics and then some like different typefaces going on there. Again, this could be another contestant for what we need to rebrand today because I don't really think this is very strong. Let's have a look and see what's in there. Oh, that's not what I was expecting. For some reason I was expecting them to have little lemon heads, um, but it's like little jelly bean things. Oh, I can't be bothered to eat that. Gobstoppers, I mean jawbreakers, whatever. Same thing. Uh, that's quite a retro wavy packaging going on there. I'm actually shaking, mate, from the amount of sugar I've had. Quite funky packaging. Again, probably a little bit outdated, but then I think candy or sweets look quite cool when they're retro. I think it's like that idea of nostalgia. So next we've got Hershey's. You know what? I've heard Hershey's been mentioned quite a lot. I think it's like very iconic American chocolate. Other than Reese's, I feel like it's probably the biggest chocolate to come out of America that we have here in the UK anyway. Never actually tried it, but I really like the packaging. And I feel like they use quite minimal type based designs. Like here, there's only got the small graphic here on the right, but it's quite clean and bold and I really like that I really like that the user type very good might want to give this a go next we've got some chocolate chip cookie dough bites probably a bit outdated looks quite 80s 90s might need that to have a little go as well and then a hostess hostess is that like a twinkie is that like a, tw a, a twinkie I don't know or is a twinkie a twinkie or is a hostess a type of twinkie I don't know something that I need to find out you know what this ain't too bad. Right, pop some of this stuff back and let's have a think about what we're gonna do. This could be a part one, you know, I could do a few of these. So let me know down below which one you'd like to see if I don't pick the one that you want. But I think today what I'm gonna give a go, right, is Hershey's. Now hear me out, because I really like the way that the brand is sort of laid out and it sort of presents itself. It's like very minimal type-based design, minimal color schemes. I just like the stronger use of typography. And I think there's something that I could do here in my own style that'd be quite fitting for the brand and would be quite cool, you know? Also, you know how Jay-Z said, I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. Well, I'm a sweet guy, but I'm not a sweet guy. You know what I'm saying? This stuff, 
Not really interested me at all. I kind of want to go down the chocolate route because I really like chocolate. Don't really like sweets. Let's have a little look at the logo online and have a little look and see what packaging looks like across the board. Maybe get some ideas of what we can do. But yeah, I'm going to pop up on screen what I've been looking at here just so you can kind of look along with me. But this is the uh, packaging that I got today and uh, what I'm using as my main reference point. But you can see across the board here the different flavors and just the base chocolate. Like throughout time, they've used this really strong use of typography. Yeah, it's very clean, clean, minimal palettes. I like this, this um, Hershey's Air Deluxe Milk chocolate i love these like dots coming off it's quite cool i guess oh yeah it kind of represents the the bubbles in the chocolate makes sense got little bubbles coming off i like it i like it maybe i need to do something with blocks but i like the type and the little sort of cubes i think that's really nice so i think there's a lot we can do actually just with the text and this idea of repetition the same way they did the packaging with the little dots for the bubbles I think we can do the same just for the standard packaging, like, you know, all the individual cubes. Can we do something with boxes, something with repetition, something just to symbolize what's inside. I think we can do that quite nicely and keep it quite subtle, but uh, use the type in a way where it sort of represents what's inside, which I think will be a nice little touch. Right, so I found a few typefaces that I like that I'm gonna sort of have an experiment with. A couple I found on Typekit, which is good because they're free, and a few that I found on Behance free fonts. A lot of them are free to mess around with, but if you wanna use it for a project, gotta pay for the license which makes sense but i've got a few of the licenses that i bought so one of the things i thought about was using this paralucent typeface which has lots and lots of nice weights which is good because then you've got a little bit of flexibility when uh, sort of messing around with a different copy and things like that the one that i was looking at the most was this sort of condensed bold one here or maybe even the condensed medium but probably the bold so that is definitely an option so i'm going to install that the next one i've actually picked four here a bit greedy yeah the next one is rift it's not too far off what we're currently got on the packaging here but i was thinking this rift bold as well i feel like the bold may Makes sense we're going to stay with the bold because it is going to be quite small another two typefaces i didn't actually select this one but i thought it was quite nice it was called quick typeface which is nice on um behance i just thought if there was going to be an alternative option that would be a sans serif or you know something a little bit more decorative this might work because it's still really bold it has those sort of different thicknesses and you know nice curves and things like that which would be quite interesting to introduce and the same with the k typeface which is another classic that's on behance uh, this one i will give a little look at just because it's just really nice so i've just popped all the typefaces down down here on the artboard just to sort of look at them next to each other and see which ones are standing out for me so this top one here which was the rift was it no Par paralucent that one i feel like compared to the others the other two are um, a bit taller and a bit more condensed which i think makes sense for the shape that it's going to have to be on the idea i've got in my head is i kind of want this first side here to be mainly text and then leave like a panel maybe on the side that block idea for like the details and stuff and keep it very text based so i'm thinking this top one maybe isn't right and um, we've got the choice of the three here. Now, this was the Kate typeface. I don't know if in all caps it really works as well. I feel like each sort of capital letter itself is the sort of main focus. Whereas when they're all together, I don't think it really works. So if it was like this, it could potentially work. But now looking at it, I think actually there's probably too, it's, it's sort of a stencil vibe and too much of it is missing for it to really work. It doesn't have that strong, like in your face, text sort of shouty aesthetic that this is going for. Maybe it's not right for this project. So I've got the choice of these two. Now this bottom font is um, another one that I bought off of Behance. This is shouting out to me a lot more than this top one. This is very strong, very, very bold. And uh, I think it really does work. I like how condensed it is. I like how close everything is together. It's still legible with each character like really close together. You know, the tracking is really small and you can still sort of uh, make out each letter. And when we're looking at this from far away, I can still read that bold Hershey's and it's still, you know, it's a lot bigger and bolder than the other one. So I think when we're like having to deal with a lot of competitive space on the shelf, I think having that bolder one will probably work. So, right, so first things first, I'm going to try and lay this out in like a really basic design way. I'm going to use this as a format, my starting point, and create myself a little block to work into and see where we're going. I want this to be a nice cream colour, like this, a nice light colour. And I'm going to just place it on top here to see the starting point. So first of all, I'm going to just sort out this logo on its own. I've set it to auto. I do think this is maybe a little bit too tight. We could just loosen it up slightly. Yeah, let's put it to 10 like so. And then I'm just gonna create outlines from here. And I'm just gonna play with the tracking on each individual letter and get it all looking the way that I want it. Cool, I'm gonna save that and put one to the side because I make too many mistakes. So let's give this a little go. I think the black maybe, oh, this looks pretty nice already. I think the black is maybe a little bit too harsh. So this needs to maybe be a little bit of a gray. Cool, this is a little bit softer here. Maybe it could be a little bit darker, actually. 
and maybe we just see what it looks like in a reverse colorway. That looks nice in the two colorways there. Maybe what I should do for each one is have a reverse colorway on either side. So one side is one colorway, the other side is the other colorway. Got the base one here and uh, I like those colors, but I'm gonna keep that to the side and I'm gonna change the cream for the blue. Nice, so that's our second colorway. And then maybe I'll do a pink one as well. I think what I'm gonna do here actually is just work in the sort of gray and cream one and then apply it to the rest of the colorways just because it's easier to work with a minimal color palette to start with and then we can edit the rest later on. So I kind of want to keep it the same tone. Just go into the pinks, it's way too light. And does that work compared to everything else? I feel like maybe it's not the right tone. It might be, I don't know, we can come back to that. I'm gonna work in this one here first and then yeah, apply it to the others. So earlier on, we looked at one of their previous packaging that had uh, the little dots coming off it to symbolize all the air bubbles in there. And that's something I wanna introduce into this sort of main bulk branding. Uh, where I want to have like something to do with cubes or repetition to symbolize the you know the repeated blocks of chocolate inside and um, sort of their blocky nature. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with some just little simple repeaters on here and see what works and then um, yeah try and come up with an idea on how that's going to work. So one thing I'm currently liking is this um, idea of repetition. I tried out a few different designs here. I hate repeaters, to be honest, at the moment. I think they're overdone to death, to be honest. So I feel like let's avoid that. Um, I quite like the idea of using that block, that cube, but it is already in a sort of block cube there, which it does represent it pretty well, but I feel like having that and then having another one, I just feel like it doesn't really work. Um, maybe if it was a different shape packaging, it might work, but for this, I don't think it is. But one thing I did actually like was sort of this blend out the repeater, I think this is definitely way too much, but this, but then I came to this resolution. Again, this is a very quick version of it. It's not actually the right one, but I like how having this repetition coming off the top, it leaves these sort of blocky shapes here, which are almost like little cubes of chocolate. So I feel like if I could do that in a nicer way, that'd be a very subtle nod to the sort of contents. And I think that kind of represents Hershey pretty well using only like type here to create a sort of geometric blocky pattern thing. Again, this is only a rough one. I feel like it can be done a lot better, but that was like the sort of base idea. So I'm gonna take this, adapt it a little bit, make it work, and then uh, see where we're at. So this is where I'm currently at. I, uh, I sort of played around with the idea of having that sort of repetition. And then what I also did was remove the sort of spacing that was, uh, or the, the gaps in the uh, the R and the S's here, because I thought it just looked a little bit better when it was blocky. So looking at the two colorways here, I think it looks really nice with that repetition. So what I'm gonna do now is just maybe get this looking nice, tidy it up a little bit. And then I wanna start adding a few of these details in. At the moment, like it has like the cookies and cream and things like that. Where's that gonna sit? I'm thinking having like a bar on the right hand side and having it sort of going the other way. So it kind of just all fits really nice and it has that block which symbolizes the block of chocolate. I think that would work really well. So I'm gonna try that and see how that lays out. But there's lots of little details on the packaging here. So like the year and things like that. So I need to really think where these things are gonna fit on there. Yeah, I'm gonna give that a go and uh, then we'll see where we're at. We've also got a light version of this typeface, which I think would be good for the little details. So like this since 1894 is what it says on there, 1894, yeah. On the original packaging, it has it in like a little tag up the side. So I think that'd be nice if we kept it. Same sort of vibe, maybe not there. Maybe on this little S bit here. Yeah, let's get rid of this. It doesn't have to align perfectly, but it could just go in here like that. It's like a little tag. So yeah, the other little details that you've got on there is the net weight, which I'm gonna include as well. I'm literally just gonna include everything that's actually on the front. I'm not gonna add anything else or delete anything. So maybe we can have that in there. Uh, it's like a little detail at the bottom. And then what else could go on the front? Maybe a little, uh, maybe we do just put like the little nutritional 
fact on there. Maybe if we had the details on either side, you wouldn't actually need to have the details on the back. And then you could do what I said and have the two colorway versions on one bit of chocolate. Like one side is one colorway, other side is the other colorway. We're gonna go with that. So this would be like the nutrition facts or you know whatever it says on the back here, the ingredients, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not gonna be bothered to type that all in, let's be honest, we don't have time for that. But looking at this from a you know an overview, I think this is looking pretty sick. I think if I saw that on the shelf, it would look kind of luxury, but it also has that kind of retro aesthetic going on there. I think that's just the use of that bold type and that sort of repetitiveness. And I like the tops, these, these bits that I've made here, they do also symbolize the repetition of the chocolate and obviously the little blocks, like I said before, but they're also quite nice shapes. They're all very clean, like, you know, got nice decent right angles there. We've got the lovely curves on the top of the S there. Um, so they're quite aesthetic shapes. They almost look a little bit 80s retro. Um, so that's the one colorway there. I think that looks really nice. Uh, quite happy with that, not gonna lie. So I'm just gonna see what it looks like in the reverse colorway, because I was thinking, yeah, like we can have one side this way and then the f inverted colorway on the other side of the packaging. So if you had it on the shelf, you could stack it and repeat it, flip it and reverse it, do you know what I mean? It looked good. This is currently what we're working with for the two different colorways of the Hershey's chocolate. Now I think it looks really good. I'm happy with it. What are you thinking of it so far? What we need to do is we need to now see it in the other colorways and see how it works all together because it might work in black and white, but it hasn't actually worked in all the other colorways. And I also need to change the flavors in there as well to see if it all fits in and makes sense. Because if not, then we've got a new challenge that we're going to have to tackle. So what we can do is just nab our colorways that we looked at earlier, put them down here and um, literally just swatch it. So there we have it, there we have our three colorways of the Hershey's chocolate. Again, I'd need to put those uh, different flavors in there and make them work, but I think they will work. But yeah, this is my design. Again, I've used that repetition of the type on the left, and then I've used this block on the right to symbolize the block of chocolate still. And uh, you know, you can break off the bits like that. Uh, it's, it's a bit more of like an old school retro take on the uh, packaging. So this was like the first one that I was using as the original reference. And uh, this is where I got to. Again, it's a bit conceptual and it's in my style, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's right, but this is more of just my take of a rebrand. But yeah, I think each one is really strong and powerful. If I saw this on a shelf, me as a designer, I probably would be drawn to it just for the way that it looks. And uh, it's quite shouty with the sort of bold text there. And then maybe I need to play with this pink. It might be a little bit too, and the blue might be a bit too intense. Maybe they need to be a little bit more dusty to go in there with that vibe. But yeah, overall, I think they look really nice to go. I think they're really cool. But yeah, all good. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please subscribe and uh, leave a little like because it does help. And uh, leave a comment down below what I should do next time. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you again soon with a new one, hopefully in a new house. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Hope you're enjoying your lockdown and uh, yeah, see you in a bit.